Welcome to OrCom 2019. Um, it's great to see so many people here. Uh, we see a lot of new faces, which is good because it signals that we are reaching new people. And we also see a lot of people coming back, which is also good because it means that it's worth coming back to, I hope. So this is a special year 2019 because this is 20 years since what we usually call the year zero of open source silicon. Because it's, in 1999, we had two very important projects started. It was the Open Course website, and it was the Open Risk project. Uh, and that were kind of kickstarting the whole thing. So I wasn't there from the beginning. Uh, and I don't think anyone in this room was there, but we are regularly talking to some of the very early uh, contributors. But what happened was that a couple of years later, uh, in 2002, uh, Fluxtronics took a commercial interest in the open source silicon movement and uh, they uh, funded a lot of the people working on this uh, as, a, as a hobby project and made it into commercial projects. And this was what we call the first wave of open source silicon. Uh, they lost interest after a while and the community fell into disarray, people moved on. And then a couple of years later, around 2008, uh, a Swedish company called Orsok bought open cores and found new clients who wanted to uh, integrate open source silicon products into their uh, products. Uh, so there was a renewed interest and this kept on for a few years uh, and then they also eventually lost interest because of uh, no more commercial uh, projects. But this time there was a community that was ready and waiting and interested in taking over this uh, and people finding each other, uh, talking on chat forums, uh, email lists and working together to build something. And this is what we call the second wave of open source silicon. Uh, so some of these people were uh, Julius and me, who uh, were in the Open Risk project. And we felt at some point that, hey, we should do a conference uh, so we can see what other people look like. <laughs> and this is Orconf 2012. Uh, so uh, you can probably recognize some of these faces here. Um, our Polish friends and Julius and I, for example, uh, Jeremy Bennett and Simon. Um, so it, it, was, it was a fun event and we thought, hey, we should do this again. So we did, but this time we went to Cambridge instead. And what was interesting is that this was primarily a, a meeting for, for the people who were chatting anyway. But then the, suddenly from nowhere came these people from uh, ETH Zurich and, and the University of Bologna who are apparently using OpenRisk in their research on the parallel ultra low power platform project. And we had no idea how they had found out this conference. Um, well, that was really cool. So we thought, hey, let's do this again. So we went to Munich. Uh, and this year, we had a couple of uh, students and their professor coming, uh, presenting a new ISA that they have been working on. And we were like, oh, come on, not a new ISA. We already have like OpenRisk, we have OpenSpark, we have LM32. We don't need a new ISA. Um, but apparently, this thing stuck. <laughs> because next year, when we went to CERN in Switzerland, both the conference had grown very, very much, much more than we had expected, and we were panicking a bit. But also, out of the about 25 talks, nine, no, 11, were about uh, different implementations of this new Risk Five instruction set. So it was very clear that it was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, and I would say also that this is where we found the conference format. Uh, we are about 100 people, two and a half days. This is basically what OrfCon is. And the most important thing for our side is that this was the year when we officially launched the FOSSE Foundation. So now we kind of skipping through the whole thing here because all these conferences have been very good, but the, we have found the format and we have found uh, the concept of about 100 people meeting in a relaxed environment, trying to collaborate and, and do things together. And we also move around Europe uh, so that we're able to pick up local communities who are not able to travel so far. 
Um, and I think one highlight from, from last year in Gdansk was that we had pretty much all the major new HDL languages represented, like Chisel, Spinal HDL, Clash, um, to name a few. Uh, and this is what we are all about. We want people to collaborate and, and do things together and learn from each other. So last, no, this year, uh, we finally made it to the US because a lot of people are not able to come from the US uh, because of this um, thing, watery thing between uh, Europe and the US. Uh, so we made it to Portland in Oregon, and that was a great event. Uh, and I think it was the most memorable thing was that despite having all these really, really smart PhDs and, and people from the industry and, and from academia, there was a high school student and a college student who took everyone by storm by presenting their projects. And that was a lot of fun and it was also very clear that this is, we, we need, this is what we want to do. We want to have people, individuals, presenting the projects, learning from each other, having large corporations and, and uh, single individuals working together to do something. We also had WASH, uh, which was co-located with the uh, RISC-V workshop. Uh, in Zurich this summer, um, and we are suddenly growing from one to three conferences a year, and it puts a bit of pressure on us, but we, we manage. And now it's time for Conf 2019, and if the, I want to pick a theme for this conference, I think it's this is the year of the organizations. We have representatives from the RISC-V Foundation, the Chips Alliance, Open Hardware Group, Open Power Foundation, um, Fossil Foundation and others that I probably have forgotten to mention now. But I want everyone to enjoy themselves here. Uh, I want you to uh, think of each other. We have a code of conduct uh, where it says how you should and should not behave when you're here. When it comes to security, uh, I should probably have prepared something, but run out through the nearest door. I would expect it's a good thing to start with. It's also a pretty tight schedule. Keep your time slots. We will. Uh, take you off stage uh, any way needed uh, if you're overrun. And talk, reuse, collaborate. Thank you.